welcome in our experimental studio in the Jewish Museum in Hohenems and happy birthday, Aaron Tenser. I'd like to welcome you to this unique birthday event. Today, 150 years ago, Aaron Tenser was born in Bratislava, then Pressburg. Unusual times require unorthodox ideas. And so this evening offers us a communication, a common ground we rather wouldn't have thought of a year before. And a communication system with certain rules. So in order to have a good transmission, I ask everybody to mute himself and herself and switch off your cameras if possible. So we have the best trans transmission possible. Instead of inviting you to Hohenems or to Göppingen or to Merano or to Bratislava, we joined forces tonight and come together online, following the traces of our own tensor. Together, not only with our audiences in four European cities, but also with you, the descendants of Aaron Tenser and of other Jewish families from Hohenems. I'm Hanno Löwy, director of the Jewish Museum of Hohenems, and I will host you this evening in collaboration with our colleagues from the Jewish Museum in Merano, the municipalities of Hohenems and Göppingen, and their city archives, the Jewish community of Bratislava, and with the help of my colleagues, Raphael Einetter and Itzig Feuerstein. We never did such an event before, so I just hope our experiment will work smoothly. And I also apologize for everything that might not work perfectly. In the course of this evening, I will introduce you to contributions by the city of Göppingen, Isabel Grupp and Karl-Heinz Ruhrs and Dominic Sieber from the Göppingen City Archives, Tomasz Stern, Chairman of the Jewish Community of Bratislava, Eva Graper, Founding Director of the Hohenems Jewish Museum till 1995, and Head of OK Living Together, the Center for Integration and Immigration in Freiburg today. To Mario Lechner from the City Archive of Hohenems, and Elisa Rosecker, Head of the Cultural Department, of the city, Federico Steinhaus, founder of the Jewish Museum of Merano and head of the Jewish community for many years, and his colleagues Joachim Innerhofer, who is running the museum today, and Sabine Meyer, the historian working close together with the museum. Alex Meyer, the mayor of Göppingen, and Dieter Egger, the mayor of Hohenems. And last but not least, descendants of Aaron Tenser in the US. Uri Tenser, who is active for the American Friends of the Jewish Museum Hohenems for so many years, and Helen Lott from California. Before we start our journey following the life of Aaron Tenser in Bratislava, where he was born, let's watch this wonderful introduction, a movie our colleagues in Göppingen produced for this occasion that takes us all around. Again, Grants and Frank, the youngest family members. Dr. Aaron Tenser, rabbi, scholar, patriot. A scene from the mid-1920s. In front of the rabbi's house in Köppingen, three generations of the Tenser family have gathered to picture taken. Krenz and Frank, the youngest family member standing right at the front, will later become a famous portraitist in America. He will then paint his grandfather Aaron from memory and give the oil to the Jewish Museum Göppingen as a present. Dr. Aaron Tenser's last resting place is located in the Jewish section of the cemetery of Göppingen. 
The rabbi died aged 66 on February 26, 1937. The inscription on his tombstone might appear somewhat boastful today. Jewish chaplain in the World War from 1915 to 18, bearer of high decorations, author of scholarly works. Dr. Tensa himself included this wording in his will. At the time he wrote it down, his merits had long been erased from public life and forgotten. Today the words engraved in granite give us a pause of thought. In 1871, Aaron Tensa is born in Pressburg, today Bratislava in former Hungary, now Slovakia. He descends from a strongly traditional family of rabbis. In the 19th century, Pressburg is a center of Jewish culture and of the teaching of Jewish theology. Thanks to his rhetoric faculty, talented young Aaron gains the reputation of a wonderkind. In 1892, he leaves the Orthodox Jewish community of his hometown. He studies in Berlin, striving for a comprehensive Jewish-European classic education. In 1895, he prepares for his doctorate examination as a student of Professor Ludwig Stein in Bern, Switzerland. Dr. Tenzer takes up his first position as a rabbi in the Austrian community of Hohenems in Vorarlberg late in 1896. As the state rabbi of Tyrol and Vorarlberg, he heads a large rabbinate district. After he has married his wife Rosa, the newlyweds move into the rabbi's house in Hohenems next to the synagogue. Four children will be born in this house, one of which, a daughter, will die early. In 1905, Dr. Tenzer moves to Tyrol, taking up the newly created position of state rabbi in Mirano. A few years before, he had held the sermon inaugurating the new synagogue, the secession of the Jews of Tyrol from the Jewish community of Hohenems gives rise to a heated debate as a result of which Tenzer's new post is no longer tenable. It is a situation that in 1907, Dr. Tenzer successfully applies for the vacant position of state rabbi in Göppingen. The Jewish congregation has acquired a house next to the synagogue, which will serve as both his home and office. In 2002, the house is named House of Rabbi Tenzer to commemorate the 30 years in which Dr. Tenzer contributed to public life in Göppingen. Dr. Tenzer is deeply committed to fostering social and cultural matters regardless of the religious denominations. His fight against pulp fiction novels in favor of good literature results in his founding a public library, which he runs all by himself. He indexes the inventory, he sets up a library system and takes care of landing the books and taking them back. For many years, he is the city's voluntary librarian. 1984, Göppingen's municipal library turns 75. A citizen's initiative calls attention to its founder using a simple cardboard sign. The city's administration reacts by having a plaque made in his honor, which is placed on a wall inside the library. Wherever Dr. Tenzel lives and works, he gains an excellent reputation as historian, scholar and publicist. In Göppingen, he is one of the major speakers in the city's Association for Arts and Scholarship, a sort of precursor to German adult education centers of today. Each week, more than a hundred people attend Tenzer's lectures on Goethe's Faust or Nietzsche's Zarathustra. Continuing the work that he started in Hohenems, Dr. Tenzer researches the history of Göppingen's Jewish community. In 1927, he publishes a voluminous book on the Jews of Jebenhausen and Göppingen, thus providing a lasting contribution to the 150th anniversary of the founding of the Jewish community in Jebenhausen, an event that will strongly impact on Dr. Tenzer's life and on the lives of many other Jews in Germany, is World War I. Aged 44, 
Tensa volunteers and is sent to the so-called Army of the Book as a Jewish chaplain in 1915. His two eldest sons, Paul and Fritz, too serve at the Eastern Front. Dr. Tensa works for the Red Cross and provides pastoral care to the Jewish soldiers. He also sets up a soup kitchen for the Jewish population in need. In November 1915, in a letter to his wife, he writes enthusiastically, I praise the Lord for giving me the opportunity to found an institution like this. People are talking about it all over town. Everybody comes to see it. In 1918, Dr. Tensa returns from the war, which has left its marks on his health. He proudly bears the war decorations he has received. The Göppingen Military Association awards him with an honorary membership. However, it is not long before the Jews are accused of having shirked their duty and collectively blamed for the Germans' defeat in the war. In 1933, the Göppingen Military Association excludes its honorary member for being a non-Aryan. Dr. Tensa sticks the letter of exclusion on a sheet of paper next to the honors he has received. At the top of the page, he writes the title, that is how the fatherland gives its thanks. The Jewish soldiers that fought and died at the front are erased from public memory. On the Chronicle of War Honors, set up in 1935, the names of the six Jews from Köppingen who died and the 69 Jews who fought at the front are nowhere to be found. Their memory is kept alive only on a plaque in the synagogue. After power has been handed over to the National Socialists, Dr. Tensa can do nothing but retreat from public life. He works on a book titled The History of the Jews in Württemberg, which is published in 1937. It is the Hotel Detwebacher, close to the train station, that becomes the refuge of the Jewish community. Here, Dr. Tensa holds lectures and the members of the community meet on the Jewish holidays. Dr. Tensa does not live to see the synagogue burned down in 1938, nor the beginning of the deportations of the Jews from Göppingen in 1941. Among the victims is also his second wife Bertha. After stays in several Jewish nursing homes, she is deported to the concentration camp of Theresienstadt and killed there in 1943. Dr. Aaron Tensa dies on February 26, 1937. The super-regional Nazi hate sheet flame sign reports on two Christian friends of his visiting his funeral, denouncing it as an act of reverence out of place. In his will, Dr. Tinzer wrote that he did not want any eulogy or obituary at his funeral. Today, both the Jewish Museum Hohenems and the Jewish Museum Göppingen commemorate this outstanding personality and his life's work. It is thanks to the rabbi's descendants that the museums are in a position to show photographs and other documents of his life. The life into which Aaron Tenza was born in 1871 was not a life of great fortunes. In Hohenems, he looked back into his life, I as an object, studied by myself. He called his critical self-examination. I want to hold a non-partisan mirror up to myself, bring up in front of me all the mistakes I have made in life, so far, and in recognizing them, I want to find peace, and I really need it. When Tensa started to write his recollections in 1904, most probably on a Christmas night, he remembered poverty 
and a broken family. His father, an Orthodox rabbi, had left his mother, himself, and his siblings. And Aaron Tenser had to start from scratch, from the bottom of the Jew's lane in Bratislava. Most of the Jew's lane of Bratislava does not exist anymore, and unfortunately, Thomas Stern, head of the Jewish community in Slovakia, Slovakia's capital, did not make it into our transmission tonight. We have no idea what happened. We couldn't reach him by phone. And uh, I'm sorry that we can't show you this virtual tour that the community prepared, a virtual tour through the Jewish street of Bratislava, Tensor explored as a child. So after his upbringing in Bratislava and his studies, in 1896, Aaron Tenser arrived in Homes, together with Rosa Handler, the daughter of the rabbi of Tata, his first wife. And Tata was the first place where he became a rabbi. The Jewish community he found here in Homes was what he would have liked, what he would have looked, he looked for, if it wouldn't have been so small already. But at least it had a great history. And Tenser was a historian. He was a liberal, he was educated by Moritz Lazarus, the leading figure of German reform and Jewish ethics. And he started to write the history of a small but cosmopolitan modern community. The result, the history of the Jews of Hohenems laid the foundation to the process that 80 years later led to the installation of a Jewish museum. This museum. Ifa Graper, would you please join us here? Ifa Graper, who uh, was the first director of this museum, you made it into life and uh, put it on the map, so to say. How did Aaron Tenser inspire you, your work at the museum as the first director? Good evening, Hanno. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you very much, dear Hanno, for organizing this celebration and inviting me to speak to this distinguished circle of people this evening. My kindest regards uh, to the descendants of Aaron Tenser, the person we are celebrating this evening a person so important for the particular profile of the city of Hohenems and of the province of Vorarlberg as a whole. I'm honored to stand here, to sit here as the former director of the Jewish Museum of Hohenems in its version 1.0. That's what I uh, thought when I prepared this, this uh, speech which opened nearly 30 years ago in spring 1991. And, I, and that's very important for me. I want to speak on behalf of the many people who had worked for many years to get this museum established and opened at that time. I'm not sure whether people who work for the museum today or uh, people who know its permanent exhibition today can assess the importance, the importance of our Tensor's book on the history of the Wohnheim's Jews for establishing the museum and its first exhibition in 1991. I know how you do, but I'm not sure whether other people can do that. This first permanent exhibition of the museum already gave a very comprehensive insight into the history of the Jews in Wohnheim's from the 17th to the 20th century. That was anything but natural and only possible because of Aaron Tenser had laid the foundation. Contemporary historical research at that time could never have accomplished that. In his work, Aaron Tenser has given us access to innumerable historical sources that would have been lost without him. In particular, we owed him important and detailed information on the internal constitution of the Jewish community of Hornems and its culture, ranging from religion and language to various other forms of cultural life. And he gave us detailed information on families and a variety of individual people who had formed the community. 
Thanks to Arantensa's work, this museum was able to give a very detailed portrait of Jewish life in this former rural Jewish community of Hohenheim as early as 1991. And that was anything but natural, considering the state of the art of historical research on rural Jewelry at that time. Arantensa's opus was important for a museum which wanted to tell the history of people rather than provide mostly political history. It was crucial for a museum that wanted to raise interest of the people today for the lives of the people who had lived there before and, if possible, to bridge the gap between them. However, without neglecting the history of anti-Jewish prejudice, of persecution and extermination of Jewish people in Hohenems as well as in other places of Austria and Europe. Aron Tenzer's book was omnipresent in our hands, day in and day out. Look it up in Tenzer was the most frequently heard sentence among the scientific teams of the early days of our museum. And you could tell it by the look of the book covers. They were really well thumbed, lost their binding, and were full of handwritten com comments and stuck in post-its. When preparing for this short speech to you, I was looking for my tensor, tensor, which was not easy to find because I hadn't used it for years due to the change of my profession. And this is exactly how I found it by myself, deplorably worn out and littered with post-its. I think these post-its are from <laughs> the early times when I, when I used it. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Dr. Rabbi Tenzer, and thank you for everything. You have created an indispensable tool for all, us, for all of us, and I really hope that you are satisfied, wherever you are now, with what we made of it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, we already learned also from the film that Aaron Tenzer was not only a chronicler of Jewish history. He believed in the spirit of progress and the role of Jewish ethics in this progress of mankind. So he really had a mission and you probably needed that energy to work on books like that. And he published not only one book like that, but several. And lots of articles and essays and registers. He was a man of order. He loved registers and he did registers of the cemetery and of libraries and of archives. He wanted to educate and to teach anybody who was interested and who was willing, not only inside of the Jewish community. He delivered public lectures on German literature and history modern theories of evolution and Darwinism, or even on stenography, something he took pleasure in particularly. He founded educational clubs, libraries, and the Honems City Archive. Here is Aaron Tenser's handwritten catalog, describing all the resources that he could find in the municipal archives in the Hohenems uh, City Hall. Elisa Rosecker and uh, Mario Lechner now will present us um, this unusual heritage of a rabbi. Hello and good evening. My name is Elisa Rosecker. I'm the head of the cultural department of the city Honems. It's a pleasure for me to give you the significance of Aaron Tenzer for the Honems City Archive at this special day. I have to apologize my colleague Mario Lechner. He is the city archivist. He collected the whole content for this presentation but he is sick and he has no voice to speak today to you. Hanno Löwy and Eva Grabher already discussed the faces in the life of Aaron Tenzer. 
I will give you some information about his way in Hohenems. He finished his education with PhD in the year 1895. And in autumn of 1896, Aaron Tänzer moved with his wife to Hohenems and began his work as a rabbi and as a citizen of this community. At this map, you see the whole area of the Jewish community at this time. Aaron Denzer was responsible for, for Arlberg and the county of Tyrol. Denzer was often on the move between Lake Constance and Lake Garda. Aaron Denzer was not only active as a rabbi in Hohenems, he was also very committed and actively involved in the life of the town of Hohenems. Among other things, he was a member of several associations, for example, the Beautification Association, and he founded the Bildungsklub Hohenems, an association for adult education in which he gave lectures on literature and history. He wrote numerous theological and scientific publications, for example, on the Israelite cemetery in Hohenems and articles for various daily newspapers. His most important work for Hohenems is probably the history of the Jews in Hohenems, published in 1905, which is still considered a standard work today and forms the most important basis for Hohenems Jewish Museum. In course of his research to this book, he found that the files of the town were not in condition to enable scientific work. The mayor at that time, August Reis, agreed Aaron Tänzer to sift through, sort and document the archive material. He divided the inventory into 61 so-called festicles, bundles of files, and document them in an archive register. He developed an instruction for using the archive, which was signed by Mayor August Reis at the 19th November 1903. Aaron Tänzer left Hohenems 1905 the archive he had set up was immediately continued. Unfortunately, his archive register has been revised and expanded, so that is no longer exactly in this original order. To this day, however, it is referred to as the Arontenza archive and is often cited as such in historical research. From around 1913 onwards, archiving was no longer carried out in the categories defined by Tensa, but primarily chronologically. Unfortunately, in the turmoil of the 20th century, some files recorded by Tensa were also lost. After the Second World War, structured archive work collapsed almost completely. It was until 1985 that the archive was again looked after by members of the Kulturkreis, a Hohenems cultural association. In 1999-2000, a new parish hall was built in the center of Hohenems. The city rented space in the basement of this building for the new city archive. In 2016, the Vorlberg State Parliament passed an archive law for the first time, which regulates the activities of the state archive and the municipal archives. The city of Hohenems took this as an opportunity to tackle the further development and modernization of the city archive. In the coming years, it should move to larger and more suitable premises. 
Since April 2020, Mario Lechner is the new city archivist. In the meantime, we have introduced a modern archive software and started to sift through the stocks, to check them and to record them in this new program. So now we are going more digital, but in the combination of the historical Arontenza archive. The first milestone in the work of Mario was the digitalization of the building files from 1824 to 1945. Many of these files Arontenza had already in hand and saved for posterity. Not only, but also through the Arontenza archive, as part of the city archive, Arontenza remains an important part of the history of the present and this city. I would like to quote Mario. He says, I feel honored to be able to follow in the footsteps of such an eminent Schola. And I can say my colleague Mario works in a very respectful and sensitive handling with this heritage. Thank you for your attention. In 1905, Rabbi Tenzer left Hohenems for good. His friend, Mayor Rice, had died a year before, and Tenzer hoped to become rabbi in Merano. At that time, a European capital of the cure, but also of intellectuals and Jewish Europeans, and the place where Moritz Lazarus had died and his papers and writings waited for somebody capable to take care of them. Only six years before, Tenser had inaugurated the synagogue of Merano himself, being the Landesrabbiner for Vorarlberg and all Tyrol. Today, the synagogue hosts the Jewish Museum of Merano. Brought to life by Federico Steinhaus, today it's run by Joachim Innerhofer and Sabine Meyer. I'm glad you are all with us tonight. Hello, Mirano, can you hear me? Let's hope. Now it works. Yeah. Hello. Hello, oh, Federico, please now unmute yourself. We can't hear you yet. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> I prepare the short abstract, abstract of the history of the Jewish, Jewish community of Merano. Also, I prepare it in German. I am sure many of you will understand it. And uh, with this short abstract, I just want to complete the history, not only of the time when Aaron Tense was in, living in Merano and acting in Merano, but of the time of the, we had to live and to fight with after him. So I start with this short abstract in German. Am Ende des 19. Jahrhunderts gehörten die Juden, die in Innsbruck und in Meran wohnten, zur Hohenemser Kultusgemeinde. Sie wollten aber sowohl in Innsbruck wie auch in Meran eine Synagoge errichten, da es besonders im Winter sehr anstrengend war, die Synagoge in, Him in Hohenems zu erreichen. Es entstand dadurch eine Streitigkeit zwischen Meran und Innsbruck, die endlich von, der, von den österreichischen Behörden zugunsten von Meran entschieden wurde. Und so wurde die erste Tiroler Synagoge in Meran schon im Jahr 1901 errichtet. 
und am 27. März dieses Jahres vom Rabbinertänzer eingeweiht. Bei Ausbruch des Ersten Weltkrieges war der Salzburger Rabbiner Altmann in Meran tätig. Im 1917 wurde ihm das Goldene Verdienstkreuz mit Tapferkeitsmedaille verliehen. Also beide Rabbiner, die wir in Meran zu der Zeit hatten, wurden von den höchsten militärischen und politischen Behörden des österreichischen Habsburger Monarchie äh, äh, anerkannt. Im Ersten Weltkrieg wurde auch das Sanatorium, das Meraner Sanatorium für arme Lungenkranke, dem österreichischen Roten Kreuz als Militärkrankenhaus geliehen. Mit der Trennung Südtirols von Österreich und dessen Eingliederung in Italien am Ende des Ersten Weltkrieges wurde auch die Meraner Kultusgemeinde selbstständig. Mit Zuständigkeit auch über die Provinz Trient, wo es seit 1475 theoretisch keine Juden mehr leben durften, weil es äh, damals, im 1475, wurden die Juden in Trient alle ermordet oder mussten fliehen. Und seitdem gab es eben ein Kerem über die Kultusgemeinde. Aber trotzdem gab es noch Juden, die in der Region Trient lebten. In den Jahren bis 1938, also die Zwischenkriegszeit, wuchs die Meraner Kultusgemeinde in Zahlen und Anerkennung. Das faschistische Regime schützte die Juden und viele Juden aus Mittel- und Osteuropa fanden dadurch in Südtirol Zuflucht, bis Mussolini eine Volkszählung der Juden im 1938 verordnete und dann anhand dieser begann auch die Juden in Italien zu verfolgen. Und äh, natürlich teilten die Meraner Juden das Schicksal der anderen äh, italienischen Juden nicht nur, aber sie wurden von beiden Seiten verfolgt, sowohl von den Faschisten wie auch von den Nazis. Sofort nach dem 8. September 1943, dem Tag des von Italien unterzeichneten Stillstandes, marschierten die Nazis in Südtirol ein. Und eine Woche später wurden die Südtiroler Juden als erste in Italien deportiert. Ein Jahr später wurde in Bozen ein sogenanntes polizeiliches Durchgangslager errichtet, in dem nicht nur Nazi-Gegner, sondern auch Juden gefoltert und grausam ermordet wurden. Über dieses Lager in Bozen fuhren auch die verschiedenen Züge, die die Juden aus Italien in die verschiedenen Vernichtungslager brachten. Nach Kriegsende zogen ca. 15.000 überlebende Juden über den Brennerpass und den Reschenpass nach den Städten Italiens, von denen aus sie nach Palästina auswandern konnten oder auszuwandern hofften. Uh, unter anderem war Meran auch eine Station von Odessa, von der Radlein. Und uh, es geschah manchmal sogar, das hat mir Simon Wiesenthal erzählt, dass Juden und Nazi-Verbrecher im gleichen Hotel übernachteten. Unter diesen 15.000 Juden waren auch 5000 Juden, die mühsam mit der Hilf Hilfe vieler lokalen Südtiroler vom Salzburger Land über die hohen Tauern ins Arntal gingen, wo sie die Bricha erwartete. Die Bricha war in der Meraner Gegend sehr aktiv äh, und deren Mitglieder äh, waren sowohl, wie, sowohl in Südtirol wie auch in Nordtirol und in anderen Regionen Italiens äh, sehr tätig. Die, nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg 
war die Südtiroler Volkspartei, die regierende Partei in Südtirol, unter den ersten äh, und, und heute sehr nachgereimten äh, äh, Landeshauptmann Silvius Maniago, wurde diese Regierung und die Partei der Kultusgemeinde gegenüber sehr unfreundlich. Und unter der Bevölkerung konnte man oft auch auf Antisemiten und ehemalige Nazis stoßen, sogar mit Hilfe in der Deportierung der Juden. Das änderte sich aber langsam im Laufe der Jahre, als eine neue Generation im Land zur Macht kam. Aber erst seit nicht vielen Jahren kann man behaupten, dass die lokale Regierung, immer noch die Volkspartei, ein sehr positives Verhältnis mit der jüdischen Kultusgemeinde aufgebaut hat und pflegt. Jedes Jahr zum Beispiel besichtigen Dutzende Schulklassen das im 1995 errichtete Jüdische Museum und die Synagoge, die im gleichen Gebäude äh, existiert. Und verschiedene Aktivitäten werden, werden von der Bevölkerung mit Interesse entgegengenommen. Also die Entwicklung hat lange gedauert. Es war nicht einfach, es war sehr mühsam. Aber letzten Endes haben wir heute ein wirklich sehr positives Verhältnis zur Landesregierung und zur Südtiroler Volkspartei und, im, in, und mit der gesamten Bevölkerung. Danke. I hope this uh, short abstract, uh, you could follow it and understand it. And uh, I'm, I thank you for the attention. No, it's Sabine, I think. Uh, Anmut. Ihr seid immer noch stumm. Ja. ja. Danke. Herzlichen Dank. Um, many thanks for the invitation and a uh, uh, heartfelt, heartfelt good evening, especially to Uri and Marlena, to Helen and Cliff, who uh, we are very happy to see again. We met in three years ago in Meran, and it was really a very, very great pleasure for us to have been able to meet you. And uh, on that occasion, when you stayed in Meran, it was August 2017, um, yeah, uh, we also printed an article, I just show you the picture of the Tenzer family. And it appeared in, the, in a magazine in South Tyrol. It is important because in that year uh, happened exactly what Federico now mentioned, that uh, the um, chief of the, the governor of our province, he in exactly that year, he admitted for the first time that in South Tyrol there were not only victims, but also perpetrators. So that was the first uh, official admittance that um, uh, South Tyrolians actively took part in the persecution and in deportations, which Federico already uh, told you. And um, so this was a, an important year for South Tyrol and the name of this governor is uh, Arno Kompac, he's now the current governor of uh, South Tyrol. It is important because it's, it was a change of attitude and this actually, um, now, and uh, it's also important because I think um, what Aaron Tenza did in the few years he stayed in South Tyrol um, would still be needed here. It would still, his engagement, his commitment to respect, to openness, to a honest society would still be very much needed here. In fact, uh, we have now a situation um, where also newspapers, uh, the newspaper still tries to um, influence politics to go to, towards extreme right directions and um, exactly also with tricks and mean uh, ways, fake news. And this is what Tensa criticized during his stay here in South Tyrol. He mentioned, for, for example, he coined the word anti-veritans, anti-veritans. That means those people who um, spread lies 
on Jews especially, but also on other people and media people spreading lies. He criticized that in the year 19, uh, uh, 1900, so 1900. In this year, Aaron Tenza, much ahead of his time, he criticized the press, the media in Tyrol, in the southern Tyrol, which was very much anti-Semitic at that time. So, um, uh, and his engagement also could be placed in a line with other famous um, intellectuals like uh, Daniel Spitzer. He was um, a satirist. And um, also even you can find traces of Heinrich Heine in the book of uh, Aaron Tenzer in his history. For example, when Tenzer criticizes Hormeyer, Josef von Hormeyer, that was also an archivist. And um, he, this uh, Hormeyer used the archive to manipulate people. And Tenzer criticized this fact, which already Heine criticized in his Reisebilder, in his books. And uh, so for Tyrol, this is all, it has been important for a very long time to stand up against such lies, such ways of manipulating people, of uh, making them uh, just um, comply with uh, what the, what conservative politics want them to do. And um, yes, it's very important. So this engagement, we try a lot to remember what Aaron Tenzer did for South Tyrol. And yes, so also at the end, we find at the end of this line where also, of course, Moritz Lazarus, who is uh, today um, acknowledged as uh, one of the founders of the discipline of sociology. So we find thoughts of Moritz Moritz Lazarus, of Daniel Spitzer, Heinrich Heine, and also we come, also when Kafka stayed in Meran in the year 1920, we find the same attitude uh, towards the media, the local press in Tyrol, um, which already Aaron Tenzer criticized 20 years before. So I just wanted to add um, this way how Tenzer is a model for us still today. His, um, commitment, social commitment, and his um, standing up for respect for minorities. Thank you. Good night, an alle, and auch an Shabbat Tov an alle aus Meran. Und ich will jetzt nicht, kann eigentlich nichts mehr weiteres hinzufügen. Es ist eh schon vieles gesagt worden von Meran. Jedenfalls ein großes Dankeschön auch an die Familie Uri Tänzer, die vor einigen Jahren neben in Meran war und wie man immer noch mit Recht sagen kann, ein bisschen Geist von Aaron Tänzer äh, schwirrt noch in der Synagoge herum und wenn er vielleicht auch ein bisschen am Verblassen ist, aber die Familie Tänzer Uri eben mit Helen, die haben diesen Geist wieder ein bisschen aufgefrischt, dass er weiter erstrahlen kann. Auch an die Göppinger Gemeinde ein großes Dankeschön, die auch eine vor ein paar Jahren in Meran waren, auf den Spuren von Aaron Tänzer waren. Natürlich konnte man nicht mehr viel finden, aber wir haben ja vorhin im Film auch gesehen, in Göppingen bewegt sich etwas, ist ein großes Museum und äh, die eben äh, den Geist von Dar und Tänzer am Leben erhalten. So, Dankeschön an alle. Und schönen Abend noch. <lacht> Thank you so much, uh, Sabine and Joachim and Federico for your moving words that so much uh, bring us back into the presence. Um, coming back to Tensor in Merano, the dream of becoming a rabbi in this uh, metropolis of thought in Europe before World War I did not work out the struggle about the rabbinate between Hohenheim's Innsbruck and Merano 
resulted then in a deadlock. So in 1907, Tenser was glad that Göppingen, the town near Stuttgart, was looking for a new rabbi. And I want to say welcome to the mayor of Göppingen, Alex Meyer. Dear ladies, dear Tenser family, I'm happy to be able to address you personally as well as in the name of the city of Göppingen. Despite all of the negative impacts on the ongoing pandemic, this difficult situation creates new opportunities and furthers innovation. Tonight's event is one such opportunity as it offers new possibilities with its digital format. If the event had taken place in its usual analog form, not nearly as many people with a connection to Dr. Aaron Tenzer from around the world could have been heard and engaged in dialogue. This also mirrors the widespread connections and stations in the life of Aaron Tenzer, which began exactly 150 years ago on January 1871, and which we commemorate today, spanning from the countries of the former Austrian-Hungarian Empire to Württemberg and ultimately even the United States of America, where his descendants live today. Dr. Aaron Tenzer came to Göppingen in September 907 to take office as the district's rabbi. Shaped through industrialization and being a district office, the city in the Kingdom of Württemberg held 20,000 citizens, amongst which the Jewish community formed a prominent minority. Founded in 1867, the Göppingen congregation expanded as more and more Jews moved from the neighboring village of Jebenhausen to this city at the foot of the Mount Hohenstaufen due to industrialization. Jewish life in Göppingen originates in Jebenhausen. Several Jewish families had settled there in 1777 at the invitation of the Baron of Liebenstein, who ruled the area at the time. In the years to follow, one of the biggest Jewish communities in all of Württemberg developed. And Dr. Aaron Tenzer was, without exaggeration, one of the most important and influential leaders of the Jewish community of Göppingen. This was in part due to his exceedingly long term of office, which lasted more than 30 years until his death in 1937. But even more so, it is due to his various and, as seen from today's perspective, also lasting cultural efforts and his enormous creative power, which he unfolded over these years and that have left a lasting legacy. All of Göppingen citizens across all religious and confessional boundaries have benefited from these contributions to this very day. Aaron Tenzer founded Göppingen's public library, for instance, where a brass plaque commemorates him and his achievements. He was also ahead of his time in doing what the Volkshochschule or community college do today, through countless lectures on theological, philosophical, literary and historical topics with which he familiarized and interested audience. One could go so far as to say that he already provided cultural education in a modern sense. Given this background, it is befitting that the building which was Aaron Tenzer's office and home still bears his name and nowadays houses the Municipal Cultural Office of Göppingen. Furthermore, his detailed studies on the history of the Jews of Jebenhausen and Göppingen have remained a standard work as it includes numerous original sources which are otherwise lost today. And it is therefore especially valuable to our local history. Aaron Tenzer was a philanthropist led by the spirit of the Enlightenment. As a rabbi, he stood for a liberal and progressive Judaism. And with his biography and way of life, he is an example of modern Jews of the late 19th and early 20th century in Germany, as well as much of Europe and the rest of the world. Emancipation and equality before the law turned the members of the Jewish community into full-fledged members of mainstream society oftentimes standing out as great minds, enriching their environment. But parallel to this development, a racially based anti-Semitism emerged that would break out in Germany in 19th, 1933 
and culminate in the exclusion, disenfranchisement, expulsion and ultimately in the systematic extermination of Jews by the National Socialists. Aaron Tenzer had to painfully experience this exclusion firsthand. When he died, filled with resignation, on the 26th of February 1937, at the age of 66, he had already ceased to be a part of Göppingen's public life several years before. His commitment and achievements no longer held value under the ruling National Socialist ide ideology. Aaron Tenzer's fate stands as a warning example of how quickly ideological winds can shift and a well-thought and richly deserving citizen is turned into a persona non grata by racist and nationalist ideas. In times when anti-Semitism and populism with right-wing political content are again on the rise, this aspect of the commemoration of Aaron Tenzer becomes even more meaningful. Here in Göppingen, Aaron Tenzer is remembered with gratitude as one of the city's benefactors. His memory is kept alive by the Municipal Library, the Rabbi Tenzer House, and most of all the Jewish Museum in Jebenhausen. In conclusion, it gives me great pleasure that today's digital event adds yet another dimension to commemoration already manifest in these places. And with this, I would like to hand off to Aaron Tenzer's family to thank you and send heartfelt greetings from Göppingen. Yeah, when Aaron Tenzer became rabbi, historian, and educator in Württemberg, he continued to be a public lecturer and interested in books and libraries and founded the city library or still active in the town. In 1914-15, he also became a field rabbi in World War I and went to Poland, the Ukraine, and Belarus, particularly to Bresk, Litovsk. In Göppingen, he also married again after the early death of his first wife, Rosa. He married Bertha Strauss, with whom he had two more kids. Aaron Tenzer died in 1937. His illusions of German-Jewish symbiosis broken, but his belief in ethics, universal ethics, still valuable, I hope. Bertha, his wife, died in the Holocaust, but all his children survived apart from Hugo, who made it to Palestine, but died there even before the war. Many, many descendants of Aaron Tenser today keep the memory of this remarkable person life. And uh, Uri Tenzer, you are active for our American friends for so long and welcome you on Zoom. Um, tell us a bit about what Aaron Tenzer and his heritage means to you living in New Jersey. Hope you can see me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Thank you so much. Can you ask if we can see you? Hello, everyone. I'm Uri Tanzer, also known as Yuri. <laughs> and with me is my dear wife, Marlena. And we and our family are thrilled to be with you today. Our hearts overflow with gratitude for the many occasions when we and our family were welcomed with open arms by the founders and directors, burgermeisters, by scholars, by descendants, and by the local residents and supporters of the wonderful Jewish museums in Hohenems, in Göppingen, Jebenhausen, and in Meran. Just by way of a side, I can't thank Sabina and Joachim and Dr. Steinhaus, and of course, Alex, Meyer, everyone for 
joining us so far this morning here, this evening where you are. Anyway, uh, we can't thank you enough for continuing to uplift Rabbi Aaron Tanzer's legacy, including, of course, by today's program, with more to come later this year, I understand. How different the world into which Aaron Tanzer was born in 1871 is from the world in which he died in 1937 and the world in which we are able to meet today, technologically distant via Zoom and during a worldwide pandemic, no less. It is beyond incredible that 150 years after his birth in Pressburg, our grandfather, Rabbi Aaron Tanzer, who passed away at the age of 66 in 1937, would be celebrated today on January 30, 2021, on the 150th anniversary of his birth by scholars and archivists and by Jewish museums in Bratislava, hopefully we can reconnect, <laughs> in Hohenems, in Göppingen, and in Murano. If only he could have foreseen during those last dark years of his life, when Germany turned its back on civilization, that in time, the power of mankind's better angels would overcome the banality of evil. I, for one, feel confident that Aaron Tanzer's spirit is with us today on this long distance call. How amazing is it that today the internet enables his proud progeny, including his five grandchildren and his nine great grandchildren to participate in this wonderful tribute from the United States and Canada. <clears throat> Sadly, Uncle Irwin, Aaron, and Bertha Tanzer's youngest child has already passed away. He was most intimately involved and in frequent co contact with Dr. Karl Heinz Roos. Thank you for joining us and so many others during the formative years of the Hohenems and Gebenhausen Jewish Museums. If only Irwin could observe today's event. He is the one person who should be speaking to you on behalf of our family today. From the time my sister Ruthie and I grew up in Palestine during the British mandate, and after we moved to the States in 1951, we were well aware of the reverence with which our parents and our uncles and aunts held Rabbi Tanzer and his wives, Bertha, and Rosa of blessed memory. In a few minutes, our cousin Helen Lott will tell you about her grandmother, Bertha. My grandmother, Rosa Hundler, was the sister of Simon Hundler, who changed the family name to Hevesy and who became the chief rabbi of Hungary from 1927 until his death in 1943. Rosa was 21 when she and her 25-year-old husband, Aaron Tanzer, were married on June 2, 1896. At that time, our grandfather was on staff, and I guess he was the rabbi for just six months at a synagogue in Totis. I think it may also be Tata. At that time, he... Uh, was had commenced his career on December 1, 1895. How unimaginably tragic Rosa's death must have been when in 1912, at the age of only 37, she succumbed after an ill-advised second operation for what today would have been an easily curable thyroid condition. We are truly thankful for the years that Rosa lived, for she was not only the devoted and much loved wife of Rabbi Tanzer, 
but also the birth mother in Hohenems of my uncle Paul in 1897, my father Fritz in 1898, my aunt Rennie in 1902, and my uncle Hugo in Meran in 1906. It's simply wonderful that we can join today in a technologically driven shrunken world to thank Aaron Tanzer for his authorship of monumental works depicting the rich history of former Jewish communities in Hohenems, in Vorarlberg, in Göppingen, in Jebenhausen, and in Wittenberg, and in Meran. <clears throat> We are also grateful for his many other important scholarly endeavors, the academic research, the plays he authored, the lessons he taught, the sermons he preached, the broader intellectual legacy he dispensed, including his intimate explorations of the works of Heine and Goethe, and his mentor, the philosopher Moritz Lazarus. A recent book by Peter C. Applebaum titled Loyalty Betrayed Jewish Chaplains in the German Army During World War I includes a complete English translation of Rabbi Tanzer's World War I diaries. It brought home to me just how selflessly our grandfather sacrificed for Germany, including his own health. He endured horrific conditions on the Eastern Front his selfless devotion to give comfort to soldiers of all denominations and to help feed hungry souls was truly exceptional. We are deeply grateful to everyone in Hohenems, Bratislava, Göppingen, and Meran, and also to our friends at the Leo Beck Institute who have been so dedicated over the past 66 years since Germany and Austria regained their senses to honor Aaron Tanzer in so many ways, by exhibitions in books, articles, television programs, web pages, and social media. And of course, today by this wonderful program and the amazing video production, which we just experienced. Please forgive me for not naming names or we will be here all night. You all know who you are and I hope you also know how much each and every one of you and your families mean to me, to Marlena, and to each and every member of our extended family. Finally, just a quick reminder, in my capacity as secretary treasurer and on behalf of our great organization, the American Friends of the Jewish Museum Hohenende, I invite everyone to visit our website, afjmh.org. There, thanks to David Tanzer, our family's webmaster, you will also find links to the newsletters which were published by the American Friends since 1991, including biographies of descendants from families described in Aaron Tanzer's book. Thank you, danke schön, so much. So now we wait for Helen Lott from California. I hope you are unmuted and your camera is working. Please show up. Um, I am unmuted. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. I, I, I have attempted to unmute myself but I'm not sure how to turn the camera back on. So maybe somebody can help me. 
It works. Yeah. It works. It works wonderful. Okay, you can see me, you can hear me. Yes, perfectly. Wonderful. Well, uh, I also wish to say how very grateful our family is for the many people who have organized this day. It's morning for me, afternoon, evening for you uh, to celebrate our grandfather's 150th anniversary of his birth. My father, Erwin, didn't speak much about his life in Germany to us, but he did always tell us that his father was a great man. As a child, I didn't understand what that meant. I have learned through several visits to Europe, but I just wanted to say that in today's celebration and the people who have spoken, I've learned even more and I'm so grateful to you for that. Back in 2007, when my grandmother, Rabbi Aaron's second wife, Bertha, was to be honored with the laying of Stolperstein and Guppingen, I very reluctantly said I'd be the family representative. Reluctant because Germany was not a place I had wanted to go, but I did want to show appreciation for my grandmother being remembered and honored. It turned out that that trip was a life-changing experience for me. From the moment that my girlfriend who came with me and I arrived at the Guppingham train station on Easter Sunday, we were met by Claudia holding an Easter branch and wearing a smile. The warmth, kindness, and generosity shown to us by so many people changed my whole attitude about Germany. I was taken to locations that would be important to me. We went to the cemetery and I was able to be inside the house where my father grew up. I was driven to Hagerloch and saw the last place that Bertha lived before her deportation to Theresienstadt. I was even driven to Bronsbach where my mother used to spend her childhood summers with her grandmother. I was shown Jewish museums in Jebenhausen and Hagerlach, and even in Little Bronsbach, the rabbi's house was at that time being renovated to create a Jewish museum. I was totally surprised and shocked by this. I had no idea that today's Germany has so many people of goodwill and who build Jewish museums, lay Stolpersteins, and create occasions such as this celebration. I believe my grandmother's life was one of caregiving. She did not marry until she was 37 because she cared for her ailing parents until they died. When she married the rabbi, his four children were aged seven to 16. One year after their marriage, my father was born and another year later, Ilsa was born. Baby Ilsa was less than a month old when the rabbi left for the war. It could not have been an easy three years for her or for any of them while he was away. 20 years later, after the rabbi died in 1937, Bertha had to move several times before her deportation in August of 1942. I do know that my father was haunted his entire life by the fact that he was not able to rescue her from her miserable death in Theresienstadt. He did try. So much of what I know about my grandparents' lives is of hardship and it's very sad for me to read about it and to think about it. So I'm very grateful to those of you who created today's joyous occasion I also wanna add that my two times participating in the reunions of the descendants of the Jews of Hohenems and my visit to Murano were very meaningful experiences for me. I have many happy memories of time spent where my family used to live and of the people I met, you and others 
who live there now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen and Yuri, for these moving words. And uh, actually, I don't know how to say that the gratitude is more on our side. But this would be a nasty competition of gratitudes. But there's one thing I can say. There should not be a birthday party without a present. We are already thinking for quite a while, what could be a suitable present for this day? Not only for Aaron Tenser, but also for you, the descendants. And let's be a little selfish, maybe for us all. So we thought of this might be the right thing to do. And such a thing needs a proper place. So we thought of the right person to take care of this present. Uh, I welcome Mayor Dieter Egger of Hohenems. And yeah, I would love to give this present over to you first. And maybe you can explain a little what we can do with it. Of course, uh, dear uh, descendants of our own dancer, uh, all guests at uh, the Worldwide uh, Web, uh, let me say uh, it's an honor for me to address you and uh, it's an honor for me to be uh, part of uh, this nice uh, evening. This is a special moment uh, for Holmes, uh, not only of the uh, birthday of our own dancer. It's for us, it's time to say thank you. And uh, this sign will do this. The city of uh, Holmes owns our own tensor. More than most of our citizens know, he was much more than just a rabbi of the Jewish uh, community. As we learned uh, tonight, uh, he took part in the move of our little city in the 20th century. He wrote the history of the Jewish community and made it possible that generations of descendants could relate themselves to this town centuries after their physical presence in the region. And he helped to form such a remarkable force of living memory and a contemporary worldwide community. By preserving the history of the Jewish community, it made it possible to install a worldwide recognized Jewish museum. We are very honored. It. Together with the mayor, then he established our archive and helped to save the memory of our town, town as a whole. And as a historian, he also wrote about many facets of our regional history. The Jewish Museum is helping to bring all that to attention of many peoples, but still there is no sign in the streets that presents our attention to everybody passing by and everybody looking at the map. This is our attention here. And uh, now uh, we want to give this special place here the address, our attention place one. <laughs> So next time, and hopefully it will be soon, soon if you come here to Hohenems and visit the museum, you will visit our Tensor Place 1 here in Hohenems, a proper address for the Jewish Museum. I say thank you to you all and congratulations. I hope you like this little surprise. I hope you like our way to say thank you and honor the work of our intensive here in Homeless. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you to the city of Homeless for the willingness to acknowledge this person in this way that really will make its way into the world. So uh, thank you to the tensors.
and all of you participating in this event tonight. I'm not sure if uh, Uri maybe wants to have the last word. Um, is Absolutely. He... <laughs> <laughs> I can't say enough thank yous to the Burgermeister for this amazing gift. It is incredible. We cannot thank you enough for thinking this idea up for honoring our wonderful grandfather. It's a pleasure to see you again, Mayor Dieter. And please, uh, what can I say? Stay well, keep away from COVID-19. We don't need, a, we will be back to ho and sooner rather than later, no matter what, as a family. And we're not going to wait for the next reunion, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, again and again. We cannot express our appreciation anymore, except we have no words. So please, again. Bleib gesund. <laughs> Seid gesund and uh, good night to everybody and a good day to our friends in the US, please. You also did a part in making the world a better place just in the last uh, weeks, as we all know and appreciate. Thank you for this. Thank you. Good night.